There was a conference hosted uh, in Oslo, Norway, earlier this year. There's going to be another one hosted by Mexico. That's the states of Norway and Mexico in February 2014. And our role has been to assist the organizations involved understand the full impacts of nuclear weapons and to really inform a new generation of people who think that nuclear weapons are bad but they probably don't realize quite how bad and I had to go back to calculations I did a very long time ago in another century um, to ex explore again the nuclear weapons effects and when I looked at them again and the, the first time I did this was in about 1981 which is rather a long time ago scary of itself. That's more frightening than nuclear weapons, actually. Um, that's joke number three. Um, but when I went back and looked at the effects of nuclear weapons, it shocked me again. And I remember at the time, it was pretty awful. But anyway, the, this is a couple of uh, nuclear explosions, in case you're not sure what you're looking at. They're not mushrooms. Um, this is the explosion over Mururoa Atoll. And uh, the little black shapes down there are battleships, because they want to see what happened to them. Um, and that's a nuclear shell fired from an artillery piece. There is also the um, suitcase nuclear bomb, which you, you don't throw it, it throws you. <laughs> that's joke number four. Um, <laughs> Or oh, very popular nuclear grenade, I suppose. That's the other one. <laughs> anyway, so nuclear weapons effects. Here's a list. And I may have missed something out, but they're different to other weapons in many ways. They don't just make a bigger bang. They do things which other weapons do not do. And they do things which other weapons do, but they do them in different ways. So there's an electromagnetic pulse, which is very severe, which can fry your electronic equipment straight away. And that includes your car, actually, these days. Mm. Um, there's an immediate burst of radiation. By that I mean nuclear, all sorts of electromagnetic radiation. But I do mean gamma rays and various other uh, very intense radiation of a nuclear sort. There's an intense blinding flash and flash burns caused. So that you will be blinded by the light um, temporarily but you can also be blinded permanently because the, the fishermen who are on the Japanese fishing boat, for example, where they're wondering what this funny white stuff falling on their boat was, they had mushroom cloud shapes uh, on their retinas. But um, the good news is that your retina doesn't have any pain receptors, so um, it doesn't hurt. That's sort of joke number five as well. Um, so there's a long duration supersonic blast wave and in, in, in most weapons effects there's a very sharp <laughs> impact of the blast wave but with a nuclear weapon there's a long duration overpressure and then there's a long duration negative pressure so there's a sort of double effect and these <coughs> overpressures and underpressures have durations of more than a second typically and that's very different because it's a much, that's because it's much bigger. There's fires, possible fire storms, and there's new research showing that these things are much more likely than previously thought, and the possible effect of fire storms has been underplayed uh, until more recently, and people have started thinking about this. Because, to be honest, most of the time people aren't thinking about nuclear weapons, and they don't want the, the people who possess them don't want you to think about them. They'd rather you just forget they existed in, in some respect. Then you have delayed radiation, which is basically radioactive particles that are thrown or go into the upper atmosphere and come down gradually or over a very long period of time. So that's fallout, um, which again can be uh, extremely harmful for very long distances and for very long durations, by that I mean decades or longer. And if, 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 a rate, uh, if a nuclear weapon is detonated to hit a nuclear power station, 
or a reprocessing plant, that's the worst possible combination because then you've got many more nuclei. So something like Sellafield, for example, uh, you've got hundreds of years of catastrophic levels of uh, materials such as plutonium <coughs> sprayed all over the place. Um, then these three, in a, in a way, are the most important. Uh, you've got a very complex damage to your infrastructure. Everything you depend on is broken, pretty much. Um, very complex health effects, which we don't really understand, because why would we? There's only been only two nuclear weapons dropped, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, plus several nuclear bomb tests. So it's, it's still unknown, really. And severe, we know quite a bit about what we think the climatic effects would be, but doubtless there'll be other ecological effects which we don't know about, and I'd rather not find out, to be honest. So that's the list, it's a long list. However, um, what I was tasked to do for, if you want to talk about humanitarian effects, you have to quantify this sort of thing. But the, the next slide is just to remind you of how violent a nuclear uh, explosion is. It shows the impact on house in a nuclear test at the outer edge of what's called severe destruction. Okay? If this works, there it is. Right, so there's a fireball, heat, overpressure, underpressure, and not, not any more house. Uh, so that's a, it, it's a very violent event. And in, in the old protect and survive brochures, they reckon 50% of people survive that, providing they built their protect and survive shelter properly. So we, we weren't sure we believe that. 